Hey, welcome back to Camp Read A Lot. I'm Mrs. Hammock and I am so excited that you're here with me at camp. Camp is a time for learning and having fun. I like to have fun, do you? And at Camp Re Read A Lot, we're going to spend our days reading and talking, singing, learning, and enjoying all kinds of activities together that will help to make us strong readers. That's right. Hey, parents, you can help at home too. Did you know rhyming games are a really fun way to practice phonemic awareness or sound awareness with your children? And you can make it fun by playing rhyming games, singing rhyming songs, and reading rhyming books. You might play the game, um, I see an animal that rhymes with hat and let them guess that you're talking about a cat. I hope you'll practice with your kiddos at home for this summer and help them to be strong readers. Hey campers, it's time for us to do our pledge. Are you ready? Okay, let me get my pencil, handy pen, dandy pencil down. All right, get ready. You got your scouts pledge? Here we go. On my honor, I will try my best to be kind to everyone, have a smile on my face, and a song in my heart. Great job. Whew. We have a very busy day, but before we get started, let's sing our community building song. Hello, readers. Hello, writers. Hello, campers. I'm glad you're here today. Thank you so much for joining me here at camp. You know, we always start any of our time together by, you know, you know what I'm going to say, right? By training our ears for sound. That's right, because there are so many amazing sounds here at camp. And we need to train our ears to hear sounds because that helps us to be strong readers. Okay, again, I'm looking and searching around for my pal, Scooter. Oh, Scooter, where are you? It's, the campers are here. It's time for us to do our game. I can't find him. Do you see him anywhere? Do you see him? Where do you? I, I don't see him. Do you see him? Behind the backpack? Okay, let me look. Hey, you little rascal. What are you doing down there? You're supposed to be ready to play our game. Are you ready? You are? Okay. So what kind of a game are we going to play today? Oh, that's perfect because I was just telling the campers' moms and dads that rhyming is a great way to build their brain power to be good readers. So a rhyming game would be a perfect game today. Oh, yes, very nicely done. Okay, are you ready? All right, Scooter's going to tell me three words, and I'm going to say them to you. And I want you to figure out which two words rhyme. Do you think you can do that? Now remember, rhyming words have the same ending parts. So you're going to be listening to the end of the word and see which two words have the same ending. Okay? All right. Are you ready, Scooter? Okay. Oh, he's ready. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. Here we go. Rain, joke, and pain. Did you hear some rhyming words? Rain, joke, and pain. Which two sound like they rhyme? Would it be rain and joke? No, not those, huh? Those don't rhyme. Okay, how about joke and pain? Do those rhyme? Do they rhyme? No, they don't. Okay, so I'm thinking rain and pain. What do you think? Yes, very good. Rain, pain, they both say ain. 
great job. Do you see how rhyming works? All right, do you have some more words for us? Okay, let me, oh, okay, peak. What else, what was that? Okay, peak, rake, and leak. Peak, rake, leak. Oh, yeah, he said he tried to pick some hard ones for you. What do you think? Hmm. Peak, rake. Hmm. Peak, rake. No. How about peak and leak? How about that? Yes, peak and leak rhyme. Peak, leak, they both say eek. Great job. Wow, that does deserve a round of applause. I'm gonna pat your tummy while you clap your hands. Very nicely done. Okay, I have a joke for you. Hey, why, why are you covering your face? I tell really funny jokes. No, uh, okay, I, I, I have a joke for you. I think you're gonna like it. Okay, you ready? All right, what kind of shoes do frogs love? What kind of shoes do frogs love? Hmm. You know? Open toed. <laughs> that was a good one. No, oh, get it? Toad, like it's a frog, like open. Okay, well, hey, it's time for us to do our catch of the day, okay? Are you ready? Okay, so you're gonna sit down here, right here, pay close attention. All right, today, our catch of the day, we have four words today. This word is rake. A rake is a tool that has a big comb on the end of it for collecting leaves. I bet you've seen a rake before. And how about this word? This word is stump. Do you know what a stump is? I'll give you a hint. This is a stump, right. It's the part of the tree that's left when they cut it down. Very nice. All right, let's see what else we have. Oh, this is an interesting word. Ooh, look at this one. That's kind of a fun word. Pollywog. Pollywog. Do you, do you know what a pollywog is? A pollywog is a baby frog. It's before the frog turns into a frog. Okay, and we have one more. You ready? How about this one? Crow, crow. A crow is a large black bird. All right, so in our story today, you're gonna hear some of those words from the catch of the day. Today, we're still talking about kindness. Do you remember the strength we talked about Friday with chrysanthemum? We talked about kindness, and kindness is just being nice to one another and doing nice things for someone. Not because you want them to do nice things back to you, but just because it's the right thing to do. That is being kind. And if we were all practicing a little more kindness, wouldn't our communities be so much nicer, right? So kindness is an important strength that I want you to show every day. Today we're gonna to read a story called Frog and Toad All Year. And this is an interesting story because it's actually four stories in one. I've got my reading tool. Did you see me put my glasses on? Because those are super important. Some people need tools to help their eyes see better. If you wear glasses, that is great. And if you don't, that's okay too. But remember, we all have to do what we need to do to be successful. All right, so we're gonna read this story, Frog and Toad All Year. I want you to look at it. Now, I want you to look at the cover. What do you notice about the cover? Is this going to be a fiction story, meaning make-believe, or is this going to be a non-fiction story, which means a real true story where we're gonna hear facts? What do you think by looking at the cover? Right, 
It has to be a fiction story, right? Tell me why you think that. Yes, because do frogs really wear clothes? No, <laughs> that would be crazy, wouldn't it? Right, so this is a make-believe story about two friends, one named Frog and the other named Toad. And while we read, I want you to be listening and thinking about where you see kindness happening in the story. Okay, great. All right, let's get started. Now, I do want to show you that this book has, oh, I, I was wrong. It actually has five separate stories. And maybe each one will have its own, and it will have its own story. These are called chapters. And chapters sometimes are kind of like their own little book inside of a book. So let's see what happens. We're going to start with this one here. It's called Down the Hill. All right, let's see what happens. Frog knocked at Toad's door. Toad, wake up, he cried. Come out and see how wonderful the winter is. I will not, said Toad. I am warm in my bed. Winter is beautiful, said Frog. Come out and have fun. Blah, said Toad. I do not have winter clothes. Frog came into the house. I brought you some things to wear, he said. Frog pushed a coat down over the top of Toad. Frog pulled snow pants up over the bottom of Toad. And he put a hat and scarf on Toad's head. Help, cried Toad. My best friend is trying to kill me. I'm only getting you ready for winter, said Frog. Frog and Toad went outside. They tramped through the snow. We will ride down this big hill on my sled, said Frog. Not me, said Toad. Don't be afraid, said Frog. I'll be with you on the sled. It will be a fine, fast ride. Toad, you sit in front and I'll sit right behind you. The sled began to move down the hill. Here we go, said Frog. There was a bump. Frog fell off the sled. Toad rushed past the trees and the rocks. Frog, I am glad that you are here, said Toad. Toad leaped over a snowbank. I could not steer the sled without you, Frog, he said. You are right. Winter is fun. A crow flew nearby. Hello, crow, shouted Toad. Look at Frog and me. We can ride a sled better than anybody in the world. But Toad, said the crow, you're alone on the sled. Toad looked all around and he saw that Frog was not there. I am alone, screamed Toad. Bang! The sled hit a tree. Thud! The sled hit a rock. Plop! The sled dived into the snow. Frog came running down the hill and he pulled Toad out of the snow. I saw everything, said Frog. You did very well by yourself. I did not, said Toad. But there is one thing that I can do all by myself. What is it? asked Frog. I can go home, said Toad. Winter may be beautiful, but bed is much better. After I want you to think about already I can tell that Frog and Toad are, have very different personalities. Have you noticed that? Right? How would you describe Toad? What would you say about him? Right? Yeah, I think so too. He's, he's a little grumpy, isn't he? he? He's not really very filled with joy, is he? No. How about Frog? Right, Frog is friendly and excited and he seems happy. So they're different, aren't they? But do you see how they're still friends? Isn't that cool? And that is the end of that little story. Isn't that amazing? I think we might have time for one more story in this book. It's called The Corner. All right, so let's take a look. Frog and Toad were 
caught in the rain, they ran to Frog's house. I'm all wet, said Toad. The day is spoiled. Have some tea and cake, said Frog. The rain will stop. If you stand near the stove, your clothes will be dry soon. I will tell you a story while you're waiting, said Frog. Oh, good, said Toad. When I was a small, not much bigger than you, Pollywog, said Frog, my father said to me, son, this is a cold gray day, but spring is just around the corner. I wanted spring to come. I went out to find that corner. I walked down a path in the woods until I came to a corner. I went around the corner to see if spring was on the other side. And was it, asked Toad. No, said Frog. There was only a pine tree, three pebbles, and some dry grass. I walked in the meadow, and soon I came to another corner. I went around the corner to see if spring was there. Did you find it, said Toad. No, said Frog. There was only an old worm asleep on a tree stump. Ooh, these pages don't want to turn. I walked along the river until I came to another corner. I went around the corner to look for spring. Was it there? asked Toad. No, said Frog. There was only some wet mud and a lizard who was chasing his tail. You must have been tired, said Toad. I was tired, said Frog, and it started to rain. I went back home, and when I got there, said Frog, I found another corner. It was the corner of my house. Did you go around it, said Toad. I went around that corner too, said Frog. What did you see, said Toad. I saw the sun coming out, said Frog. I saw birds sitting and singing in a tree. I saw my mother and my father working in their garden. I saw flowers in the garden. You found it, cried Toad. Yes, said Frog. I was very happy. I had found the corner that spring was just around. Look, Frog, said Toad, you were right. The rain has stopped. Frog and Toad hurried outside. They ran around the corner of Frog's house to make sure that spring had come. And it did. Great. Wasn't well, that a fun story? Now, there are three other stories in this book. And did you find some ideas about kindness? Did you hear some things about kindness? Oh, well, let's, let's see if we can remember them. We have our little key details chart, and we talked about Chrysanthemum and where there was kindness in her story. And let's see if we can think of some ideas for kindness that we heard in Frog and Toad. So I'm going to write the title of the story over here, Frog. And I'm going to make a little symbol. That symbol means and. Frog and Toad. All right. Can you think of something? Let me think. What was the very first story? I heard something really very kind. And it was Frog that did something kind. What do you think? Right. He brought clo winter clothes to his friend Toad. He brought clothes to Toad. For winter. My handwriting is very sloppy. I'm sorry about that. All right. Can you think of something else? What else do you think he did? Hmm. All right, let's think. Oh, again, I think you're right. So frog and toad. Did you hear frog again? And what did what happened in the second story? Do you remember he, Toad came in and what was wrong with Toad? Right, all of his clothes were wet. What did Frog do? Yes, he gave him tea and cake. What else did he do? Right, he told him to stand by the fire so his clothes would dry. So smart. Very good. What great thinking. Now, 
I want to just tell you the names of these other stories because you might look for this book at your county library or on Sora, but there are three other stories. One of them is called Ice Cream, one of them is called The Surprise, and one is called Christmas Eve. So this is called the contents page. It tells you what is in the book and what page number you can find it. Right! We read a nonfiction book that had that. Sometimes fiction stories also have a contents page. Very good thinking. And remember, this is the front cover of the book and the back cover of the book. This is the spine of the book. And remember, boys and girls, when we read, we start on the left page and go across. And when we get to the end of the line, we do what we call a return sweep. That means we go back over here, but we go to the next row down. That's called return sweep. And when we're done with this page, we move to the very next page at the very top. That's how reading works. And I know most of you know that, but it's always a good idea to review that a little tiny bit. Now, did you hear some of our catch of the day words in our story? Did you hear the word crow? I did. Did you hear the word stump? Very nice. Excellent job. I heard pollywog too, did you? Great. All right, so today we are gonna do a little fun drawing together. Are you ready to try some drawing? Oh, I know, boys and girls always tell me, I can't draw, but you know what? You can, and I'm gonna help you. So if you have a piece of paper and something to draw with, I want you to get it, and we're going to draw a picture of a frog. I think it'll be fun. All right, are you ready? Scooter, are you ready? Oh, good, he's ready. All right, now, I have, oh, let me get my black pen. I have my papers green because then I don't have to color it. But if you have a white paper, you can draw your frog first and then paint it or color it. That would be beautiful. And then maybe you want to send it to me here at camp so I can see it. Oh, that would make my day so happy. That would be very kind. All right, so a frog. Here's what we do first. First, we're going to start with kind of a, kind of a hill. And then we're going to put a little space in between it. And then we're going to put another hill and try to make them match. Mine is a little bit taller, and that's okay. If it's a little bit tall, that's okay. Then from here, we're gonna go out and around like that. It looks like there might be like two circles and an oval together. Did you see that? All right, so this is where uh, the frog's eyes are gonna be. I'm gonna put them here and color them in. I'm going to put this one here and color it in. And I'm going to give him two little nostrils and a great big smile. And then down here, I'm going to make his body. I'm going to make like a U. Then I'm going to make a bigger U. Then I'm going to give him great big hoppy legs. Now, frogs have kind of webbed feet because they like to play around in the water and swim. So I'm going to give him, and then I might put some spots on him, because sometimes frogs have spots. Did you know that? Yeah, they do. And so I might put some spots on him. I'm just going to do a little bit on mine, but you can spend some more time on yours. And I've got to give him some front feet, too, because he has front feet. And he looks, now he looks like he's getting ready to jump and make a big hop, right? Oh, and I might stick out a tongue and put a little fly up here. Maybe he's gonna get a fly. Fun, huh? See, I told you you could draw. I want you to think about all the ways that you can show kindness to somebody today at home or wherever you go. And I want you to practice showing kindness. I am so proud of you. Thanks campers for coming. I have a little song for you. Skin a marink a dink a dink, skin a marink a do. I love you. Skin a marink a dink a dink, skin a marink a do. I love you. I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. I love you in the evening. 
and underneath the moon. Oh! Skinnamarink-a-dink-a-dink, skinnamarink-a-doo. I love you, you, and you, and you. Campers, you did a great job today practicing thinking about stories and your rhyming. Tomorrow, we're going to learn another strength. We're going to still keep talking about kindness, but tomorrow we're going to talk about celebration. We're going to celebrate kindness and our community. So come back tomorrow so we can read another story and have some more great fun together. Scooter and I will be waiting. Bye-bye. <laughs>